AI models like ChatGPT or Gemini are great, but they can't answer questions about confidential or non-public data. Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG, is a powerful technique for this common problem. If you're building a tool to help customers with your product, or an internal tool for company-specific data, you can't use public AI models directly because their knowledge is limited to the publicly available information that they are trained on. RAG gives us a way to give the AI a repository of our specific information that it can use as a reference to answer questions or generate information. So today we'll build an application that will implement the entire RAG pipeline. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to build a Spring Boot app which can take a user's question and give back an AI-generated response using your own private data source. Now, this system has a few components, so we'll break this video down into parts. Feel free to use the chapter markers to skip ahead if you're already familiar with any of the topics. Have you ever wondered how AI models can understand the meaning and relationship behind words? The magic behind this is a concept called vector embeddings. In simple terms, it's just a group of numbers that form a numerical representation of data, in this case, text. You can think of it like a special translator. You give it a word or a sentence, and it translates that text into a list of numbers, which make up our vector. The cool thing about this is that these values are actually meaningful. So words or phrases with similar meanings have vectors that are numerically closer to each other. In the real world, these vectors can have hundreds or even thousands of dimensions. But to make it easier to understand, let's imagine a model that creates vectors with only two dimensions. So we can plot any piece of text on a simple x and y graph. So if we had to plot the vectors for dog, cat, bark, and meow, the points for dog and bark would be close, and cat and meow would be close as well. This shows that the model understands that dogs are related to barking and cats are related to meowing. The distance between any two vectors shows how closely related the two pieces of text are. So how do you create these embeddings? For this, you'll most likely need an AI model that has been trained for this purpose. While you can use paid APIs for this, the great news is that you can run powerful models on your own machine for free. There are several tools you can use for this, but a good one to get started is LM Studio, which you can download from its website here. Once you open the application, you can use the search bar to find and download different embedding models. The one I'm going to use is called the Nomic Embed Text Model. Once the model is downloaded, we can go to the local server tab on the left, select the model that we just downloaded and click on start server. This creates a local API endpoint on your machine that is compatible with the OpenAI API. This is incredibly useful because it means that you can use many existing tools and libraries that are built to work with OpenAI models. Now we can test our local server to get the embeddings for some sample text. So here we are sending a request to the v1 embeddings endpoint and passing it some text. As you can see, the result we got back is an embedding vector for the text. Although the example we saw before was for two dimensions, this model creates a vector with 768 dimensions. And while we can't visualize that very easily, our applications can work with these vectors quite easily. So if we have a search query and want to find relevant text that's related to it, all we need to do is find the distance between the search query vector and the vectors of the text that we have in our database. Now that we can create embeddings, we need somewhere to store them. To do this, we'll use PostgreSQL, which is a very popular open source database, along with the PG vector extension. This adds vector similarity search capabilities directly into Postgres. You can follow instructions on the official websites to install Postgres and the PG vector extension. If you're using a Mac, you can install Postgres using postgres.app, which would automatically come with the PG vector extension installed. So now let's create our database. We'll go into the Postgres command line and create a new database called RAG Demo. We'll then connect to it and create our table called Vector Store. First, we'll have to enable the PG Vector extension. We'll also enable the UUID OSSP extension to save our primary key as UUIDs and the HStore extension to work with JSON data. Our table will consist of an ID field, which is a UUID, which is an automatically generated unique string of characters, the content, which will be our raw text that we want to search for, the metadata, which is used to store additional information about the content, and finally the embedding, which will be the vector of the content created by our embedding model. 
The dimension of the vector needs to match the dimension that the embedding model gives us, which in this case is 768. We'll also create an index on the embedding field to make the similarity search more efficient. HNSW here stands for Hierarchical Navigable Small Worlds. It's an indexing algorithm designed for nearest neighbor search in high dimensional vector spaces. You don't really need to know the details of this, but just know that it's going to make our vector store faster to search. Now that our database is created, let's create our Spring application. We can head over to start.spring.io to create a project. We'll need to add a few key dependencies here. We'll need Spring Web for the REST controller, the OpenAI starter, which we will use to connect to both our local embedding model and the online chat model, and finally the Spring AI vector database dependency to connect to our vector store. We can then fill in these fields and then generate our project. So now let's look at our code. We can see a few files here in addition to our main application class. So let's go through them one by one. The document loader class is used to populate our database with the initial information. It implements command line runner, which means that its run method will execute once the Spring application starts. We've initialized a Spring AI vector store in the constructor, which will point to our PG vector table. So now to illustrate our rag example, we want to populate our vector store with information about an imaginary database called starlight db. So in the run method, we are creating a bunch of Spring AI document objects, which together will contain the text corpus that describes starlight db. We can see that it has a bunch of features along with information about its engine and other security features. Feel free to pause here if you want to go through this. Once we create a list of documents, we can add it to the vector store using the vector store.add method. This is where Spring AI takes our text, sends it to the embedding model that we've configured and stores both the original text and the resulting vector in our PG vector database. This method will run once, once our application starts up. Now let's look at the main retrieval logic of our application, which is in the rag service class. Here we've initialized the chat client and the vector store. The vector store is the same one that we used in document loader. And the chat client here will be a client for an online model like ChatGPT, Gemini or Claude. The retrieve and generate method contains the core logic of searching and responding. First, it performs the retrieval step. It takes the user's message and calls the vector store dot similarity search method. Under the hood, this will convert the user's question into an embedding and retrieve the most similar documents from the PG vector database. Next, we'll perform an augmented generation step. Here we take the content from the retrieved documents and join them into a single string of information. We then create a prompt using a template. We've defined the prompt template here which points to a text file in our resources folder. You can pause to take a look at the prompt, but basically it just asks the AI to answer the user's question based on the provided information. We'll pass the generated prompt along with the message from the user to the online AI model and return the generated response. The RAG controller defines the HTTP endpoint that we'll use to take the user's question and return the answer. Here we can see that we'll accept a POST request to the AI slash RAG endpoint with a JSON request body that contains the user's question in the message field. Finally, the main application class just contains the main method to run the entire Spring Boot application. So now we've mentioned a vector store, a chat client and an embedding endpoint. But how does the Spring application know where to find everything? So this is all configured in our application.properties file. First, we have our Postgres database connection details. Next, we have the routing details for our embedding model. Since our embedding model is running locally, the base URL is localhost 1234 without any API key. We're using the gnomic embed text model to generate our embeddings. We also specify the dimensions here. For the chat model, we are using Open Router, which gives us access to models like Gemini, Claude, and ChatGPT. We set its base URL and provide an API key here. For this demo, we'll be using Gemini 2.5 Flash, but you can change the model according to whatever you prefer. If you want to know more about how to use Open Router, you can see my other video about that that I've linked here and in the description. But you can use any OpenAI compatible endpoint and API key for this configuration. Finally, we have the PG vector store configuration. Here we'll define our vector table name, the index type, distance type, 
dimensions, and other parameters that Spring AI will use for vector similarity search. All right, so let's run this application. First, we'll go to our Postgres command line, and here we can see that initially there is nothing stored in the table. Now let's start the Spring Boot application. I've provided my API key here, and I'm running the Spring application using the gradle run command. The first log we see here is that documents are being loaded into our vector store. So if we run the select query again, we can see the content that's been loaded here. We could see the embeddings as well, but that would be way too much to show on the screen and frankly not very readable. But this is just to show that Spring AI did in fact get the embeddings for our content and store them in our vector store. So now let's make a request to our post endpoint and ask if Starlight is secure. You can see that this answer contains proprietary information about Starlight, which is that it has the Cosmic Shield security feature. This is imaginary information that we just made up, so it's not publicly available, and it's only present in our vector store. Behind the scenes, Spring AI retrieved these documents from the PG Vector database, sent them along with our question to the AI model via OpenRouter, which then generated this response. In fact, if you want to see what's happening under the hood, let's log the retrieved documents and the final prompt that is sent to the model just to see how it works. So we can restart the application and try asking another question. This time we'll ask what engine does Starlight use? So again, it correctly answered that Starlight uses a quantum leap query engine, but let's see how it got to that answer. So from the logs, we can see that it fetched a bunch of documents, each with a score. The document with the highest score is the one which mentioned that Starlight DB uses the quantum leap query engine. And if you look at our final prompt, this is the prompt template that we sent. And the information here is basically the content of all the retrieved documents arranged in order of their score. So the score here just shows how relevant a particular document was to the user's question. And this is what leads to our final answer being accurate. So although the example we showed worked pretty well here, there are some things you might want to consider if you want to create this kind of system in a production environment. Firstly, in our example, we used pretty small snippets for each of our documents. If you have a large document, the similarity search may not work as well, and you may have to break that document down into smaller pieces. This is known as document chunking, and each of these pieces or chunks can then be stored as a separate entry in your vector store. Another thing to think about is the quality of your embeddings. The Nomic embed text model that we used here is great, but the performance of your RAG system is highly dependent on how well your embedding model understands the nuances of your specific data. So you may want to experiment with other embedding models and maybe even paid online embedding models like OpenAI's ADA or the Gemini embedding models. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.